The truck clattered and shook violently as it detached from the aircraft above it. Loud clangs and bangs of large metal clamps springing open hammered on the roof. In less than a minute, the aircraft carrying the truck had detached and spurred upwards and away from them in a hurry. Ground team away. Good luck out there. Came a voice over the radio. Copy. See you at the finish line. Captain Roland Hubert responded as he watched the aircraft ascend and speed away. How's your headache, douche? Called a man sitting in a forward seat of the truck. He was dressed in light gray combat fatigues and a black beanie cap. He had a calm air about him, but a mischievous smile and a side eye could be seen glinting over his shoulder. Not great, August, so shut it, the shorter, thinner man named Dooch replied. He wore the same as everybody else, though looked the most miserable out of the group. His arms were folded across his chest, and his beanie was pulled lower over his brown eyes. August snickered, along with the other large and wide pack of muscles sitting behind him. This other forklet of a man was called Dimitri, or Dima for short. We are ready, Captain, came the even tones of the driver in his seat at the front of the truck. His dark blue eyes under a prominent brow line jumped from gauge to gauge projected onto the glass in front of him. Take us away, Dubo, Roland ordered as he turned his seat around to face the team seated behind him. We've been fortunate enough to be dropped off less than three kilometers from the house. Drone flyover noted a sedan parked out front that hasn't been there before, as far as we know. Roland informed them. They may be having company, or it could be a getaway car. Either way, we'll still enter with the same plan. Drop off midway up the driveway and block it off. We'll go on foot up the remaining distance. Take caution around this new car. We have no idea if it's rigged or not. A question, Cap. Spoke up a darker man with a thick accent from the back of the truck. Tawil, what's your question? Roland said without looking up from his tablet. We've never extracted a child before. If we're to get his son as well, well, what do we do differently? Tawil asked with a note of concern. Merrick Jr. is 23 years old, so hardly a child. However, we still need to handle him with some level of care. His father has been treating him for some type of illness he's had since childhood, so that makes him very interesting for the investigators, Roland told the group at large. Evidence. Dima spoke up without looking up, getting the attention of everybody else, as Dima usually didn't speak up too much. Yeah, basically, Roland confirmed. And he's really only evidence if we keep him alive and not too bruised up. Tag him and bag him, but with a little extra care. The truck climbed over lumpy terrain till it reached the nearest road. It sped quickly down the narrow and curving icy lane, trying to hurry to its destination while also keeping a lookout for other cars or animals. Dubo's eyes were darting left and right, as was his head constantly on a swivel. Despite the larger size of the truck, Dubo knew its limits well and handled it like he drove this route every day. Hirsch, how are the airwaves? called out Roland as his chair swiveled back around to face forward. Nothing yet, Captain, replied the man hunched over a computer in the very back. He wasn't wearing his hat, so his mop of dirty blonde hair was on full display. Here is the driveway, announced Dubo as he pulled a sharp right turn onto a narrow and steep gravel road. The driveway was lined with tall trees closely on either side, forcing Dubo to slow down. Load up, we get out in 60, called Roland to his team. He also checked to make sure he had everything he needed. He already unbuckled from his seat to make a quicker exit and had his gun within arm's reach. The truck rocked left and right as it lumbered up the hill through potholes buried in the snow. Finally, it came to a stop right in the middle of the driveway. Let's go, let's go, Roland ordered. The doors flung open, and out jumped Dutch, Tawil, Dima, Hirsch, and August. Roland peered around the truck towards the house, partially obscured by the trees. Dutch, Tawil, and Dima, make your way to the back door. August and Hirsch, you're with me up to the front. Quick and quiet, go, 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 Roland ordered as he led his group up the rest of the driveway 
as it curved to the left into the flat open ground before the house. Only the blue sedan sat out there. It didn't have much snow on it, and the windshields were clean. Roland knew this car had recently arrived. Was there extra people here? Did they get this car to travel undetected? Hirsch approached it first and peered inside. Then looked back and shook his head. No one was inside. Roland came up and placed his hand on the hood. It was still warm. This car was driving sometime in the last half hour. They pushed on past it towards the front door, following a set of footprints that led from the sedan to the house, none returning. Somebody just got here. Chicken arrived, Roland said into his earpiece. Chicken arrived. Someone's already left out the back, came the whispering voice of Dooch. Shit. Details. Roland replied low into his radio. Looks like two. Single file along the side of the house. Prints lead to the garage. Doors even left unlocked. Dooch answered. Follow him. We'll go in the front and meet you down there. Roland ordered before nodding at Hirsch. Hirsch pulled an oversized key fob from his belt and clicked a button on it. An uncut silver key now poked out the end of it, which Hirsch stuck into the door lock. The device clicked and rattled inside the door until it unlocked. Hirsch pocketed the key fob and gently opened the door as he hid to the side of the doorway. With the door all the way open, August went in first, followed by Roland and Hirsch. None of them spoke as they made their way down the hall. Guns lifted and ready for action. August lowered his as he approached the open door of James's room on the right. He peeked around the corner before rounding it with his gun up. Checking the far side of the bed revealed nothing. He shook his head at Roland, who nodded. Continuing down the hall, they entered the living room. Roland looked left towards the dining room. The curtains were still drawn, keeping the room darker, but not dark enough to hide the laptop visible on the table. Roland silently pointed this out to the others, who followed him in. The disassembled laptop sat open on the table on display. Hirsch looked at it for a second before tracing his finger where the missing hard drive is supposed to be. Roland nodded as August had his gun up looking into the kitchen. He signaled for the others to look at what he sees. A pair of feet wearing blue and gray slippers were laying on the floor behind the kitchen island. Ignoring the laptop for now, Roland and Hirsch turned their attention to the kitchen as well. Wordlessly, all three of them moved into the kitchen, gun barrels first, ready for anything. August went around towards the feet, while Roland went around for the head. Hirsch waited close to the doorway to keep watch. Roland and August nodded at each other before taking the last step around the island and looked down. The pale and lifeless body of Dr. James Merrick lay on the kitchen floor. Roland just stared down at the body of his target and gave an audible sigh as his shoulders fell. Shit. Roland finally spoke. He thought for a moment as he stared down at the body. He was clearly bludgeoned to death, but the only person known to be here to do any bludgeoning was his son. So his son was the main suspect in this now. Roland looked up suddenly at August, then to Hirsch. Both of them looked like they realized the same thing he just did. Dooch, how many footprints did you see outside? Roland spoke quietly into his earpiece again. Looks like two going down to the garage. Hasty leave. Dooch's voice answered in the team's ears. Looks like they just left. Garage door is still open. Dooch added as he, Dima, and Tawil approached the garage. A loud clang from a heavy metal object could be heard coming from inside the garage. Their targets may still be here after all. Instead of going through the smaller door where the footprints led, they crept around the side to the open carport. Dooch carefully peered around the corner before stepping out to face the now empty garage. Dima walked a bit down the driveway to see if he could spot anything. Their targets were already gone. 
All they had left was an empty garage with an empty steel crate sitting in it. Nothing, Dima muttered when he walked back to the group. God damn it, Dooch swore as he put his hand on his hips. Tawil pointed out the crate. Is that real? He asked, stunned to see one out here. Dooch and Dima finally took notice too and looked at each other apprehensively. Guns up again as they walked towards the crate's open door. They looked inside to find it empty, save some metal brackets to hold its payload in place. No way this was loaded, proclaimed Dooch. No way this is a real one. He was starting to panic as he took in the crate in front of him. Tawil turned and left the garage, scanning the ground for something. Tire tracks from a larger vehicle backed out of the garage and headed down the hill towards the roadway on the other side of the property. Tawil ignored this as he kept looking for something else. He didn't have to walk far to find it. Here! He called out quickly. The others came over to see what he was pointing at in the snow. In the snow in front of them was the deep gouge of a large animal print in the snow. It didn't have a lot of detail to the print, as the creature was clearly running away from the garage. Looking up, they could see prints running into the tree line towards the house. Call it in, Dima said as he took off after the prints. Tawil ran off with him too. His gun clutched tightly in his hands as he ran wide-eyed after them. White lasers emanated from an orb on a stand. It looked a lot like a round desk lamp, but these white lasers were going row by row, scanning the body of Dr. Merrick. Hirsch was putting others up around the room to start collecting data. We've got a third person we weren't anticipating here. One target is dead, and the other is gone with our mystery guest. Roland said out loud. I wonder if they went willingly together. Hirsch also wondered aloud. Why wouldn't they? questioned August. If Junior went willing with Mystery Guest, he is also involved in killing his own father. Or did Mystery Guest kill father and force Junior to go along at gunpoint? Hirsch explained, as he set up another orb on the dining room table to begin scanning the laptop and its surroundings. Dooch said it looked like two prints. Roland weighed in again. We'll have to go out and take a look at those prints ourselves. Check in. Everybody check in. Dooch's panicked voice called out urgently in their ears. We're all here, Dooch. What's... Roland started, but was cut across immediately. Get out of there! Combat cat! Repeat, combat cat headed your way! Dooch was nearly shouting into the mic as he huffed and puffed up the hill outside. The fuck he just say? Asked Hirsch. He stopped messing with the lasers and grabbed up his gun again as he started scanning the windows. Roland was about to say something into his radio until they heard the distant slam of a door downstairs. Front door was all Roland had to say for all three of them to bolt back out of the kitchen, through the dining room, and into the living room beyond. As they entered the living room, they heard the sounds of something heavy thundering up the stairs towards them from the opposite side of the living room. They rounded the corner and sprinted down the hallway to the front door left open before them. The heavy sounds were still coming behind them. They cleared the doorway out into the bright, cold snow again. Hirsch chanced to look behind him to see the dark silhouette of a menacing object down the hallway of the house. Still in the living room, and framed against the snowy trees through the window behind it, their pursuer turned its pointed head towards the open front door, noticed them running outside, and gave chase. Quit looking! August snapped at Hirsch as he tugged on his collar to face him forward again. The large creature cleared the doorway into the snow. Its matte gray metal body contrasted starkly with the snow around it. At frightening speed, it moved across the driveway to nearly close the gap on the three of them. Right as they were about to dive for the tree line, gunshots rang out. Coming around the side of the house, Dima, Tawil, and Dooch were firing on the creature. Their bullets just plinked off the side of the beast but it worked to get its attention. Roland was positioned behind the tree and joined the firefight. He took aim at its neck, just at the base of its skull and took a shot. 
It clanged off of its head and forced it to turn and look at him. Being shot at from both sides forced it to make a decision. It decided to bolt towards Dooch. Dooch unloaded his clip at the charging monster, but it didn't stop it. It leaped over Dooch and sailed down the side of the hill back down towards the driveway by the garage. Dima and Tawil sent a few more rounds flying after it as it continued down the driveway and out of sight. Holy shit! Holy shit! Dooch swore as his shaking hands fumbled with reloading his rifle. Yeah, need me to change you, Dooch? Asked August as he approached them. Shut up! Dooch snapped. Maybe it's the light, but I swear I just saw the thing change color. Tawil pointed to where he last saw it running away. A eh, good eye, Tawil. That'll help narrow it down. August clapped him on the shoulder. Narrow it down? Wondered Tawil aloud. Yeah, color change skin wasn't added until the fourth gen, I think. August explained. You never seen one, have you? He asked him. He joined after the war, so he wouldn't have. Dooch answered for him. Same with Dubo. So that was a TOD? Tawil asked. Oh yeah, an older one, but still plenty capable. Roland appeared beside the group. I have no idea how he'd get his hands on one of those. Surplus auction? Suggested Tawil as he looked at each of them. Those are never sold. Way too dangerous to have even the old ones loose in the world, informed Dooch as he too looked around at the group. Where's Hirsch? Back in the tree line, Roland gestured over his shoulder. How many crates did you see down there? One, Dima chimed in flatly. It came from the garage, which means there's most likely not one already in the house. Otherwise, they would have sent that one after us instead. That said, we'll still need to cordon off the house till we can get a cleanup team down here, Roland instructed. Cleanup team? Dooch asked. Who's down? Dr. Merrick himself, Roland answered flatly. Looks like he's been gone a few hours now. We saw two set of tracks out here, Tawil pointed out to the team. I know. They probably came in the sedan over here. Roland walked away from the group a bit. Dubo, move in closer. I need to make a call back home. Secure channel, Captain. Dubo announced as Roland slid the door closed to the back section of the truck. This is Captain Hubert. Do you copy? Roland announced into the phone to his ear. I read you, Captain, replied the authoritative voice of Director Richter. We arrived and took the safe house, but there are developments that have prevented us from taking the targets, one being that the primary target has been found dead in his kitchen. Dead? How? demanded the director's voice. Looks like a bludgeoning. Hirsch is still gathering info, but he's been dead for at least twelve hours now, continued Roland. This changes things. The director paused for a moment before continuing. What of his son? He left just as we arrived, and he didn't leave alone. A third person is involved in this incident, and we don't have an ID on them yet. The car they used to get here was stolen, so it's a dead end, said Roland. Are you in pursuit? The director asked. We haven't left yet. Turns out our targets were in possession of a tactical offense drone, fully functional. They activated it right before they left. No casualties on our end, but it left the premises most likely to pursue our remaining targets, Roland explained further. The doctor was well connected indeed. We'll need to look into how he got a TOD to be his personal bodyguard. This is a serious breach of our security to lose even one of those. Let alone have it run loose in the United States. We can't let the Americans find it. The director warned sternly. Understood, ma'am but we'll need more than an extraction team to take on a combat cat, Roland pointed out to her. I'll see what I can pull up for you, starting with a cleanup team to handle the house so your team can be freed up to pursue our remaining target, the director agreed. What of the mystery third person? asked Roland. 
ID them and bring them in as well. If they don't comply, terminate. They're now involved with a murder and conspiracy of treason, ordered the director. Understood, ma'am, Roland acknowledged. Hirsch is almost done with his initial scanning. Included in the data packet is something we found nearby in the tree line. You were right to send us out here right away. I await the data packet, then. Good luck, Captain. The director signed off, and the channel went dead. Roland slid the door back open to see his team sitting quietly inside, waiting for him. Cleanup crew is inbound to take over here. Hirsch, get that data packet sent off ASAP, Roland ordered. What of the combat, Cat? Dooch asked. Our orders are to pursue and bring both in. Junior takes highest priority. Command's working on a solution for the cat, explained Roland. Not very reassuring, August explained. Give him time. Right now, we post outside. Roland gave the order and shooed all of them out to begin securing the house till cleanup arrived. Roland secretly agreed with August, though. Dealing with an active combat cat just made this assignment far more precarious.